Okay, one more chance to play first. So yes, we went to. And no reason to send that back. Uh, Bonds of Faith in this hand may be an offensive weapon instead of a defensive. It really just kind of depends on what he's playing and what I think his threats may be. I guess Burden of Guilt would lock us down. But if he's, if our biggest threat is like he has a Bonds of Faith, we're not so worried. Rebuke, though, smite the monstrous. Our reasons we would want to be cautious. Oh, good. We've never gotten to play that one. Okay, I'm going to attack in, and I know Ambush Viper is a viable threat. But, in all honesty, I almost... I'm thinking he's going to have a lot of humans, and I don't know if the priest is going to be as useful as it is in a lot of games. And some of these other creatures may be more useful. So he's playing three colors. Hmm. That puts a little bit of a quandary as to which route I should go. But I think I go the Stalker with the Bonds of Faith. Nothing like a 3-3 three, three hexproof unblockable creature to just get your opponent on that nervous clock. You can put out the Sentry. And Iron Right should be able to hold his boar if he pumps it, then we're potentially flipping our sentry. So here we're able to kind of position ourselves in a pretty good place. I may want to hold back on spells. Since there's a likelihood that I'm facing werewolves, um, I may, may need a spell or two to be able to cast to keep him from flipping. And like I said, I really want him to kill my creature. Him to give me something more to do with my sentry, which he didn't. And because I probably should do this. I I kind of want to cast that, but doing this allows me to get in for three extra damage this turn. And I can tap him down next turn. And I can always bring out Increasing Devotion next turn. But I may not have the opportunity to attack next turn. Okay. Eight makes it pretty tough. So here, let's go ahead and Tap that guy. Take our eight. Actually, it might have passed. I think he could have attacked with it. Which would have been considerably worse. Okay, so I have the Slayer to kill him. Can you flash it back? We'll be able to soon. It's me five toughness on the board though. We could put in ten on. I think we just attack with these two. And then see where the math leaves us. That doesn't get rid of it. 
<laughs> but I guess now he knows that. Okay, so he's at 18. And he didn't attack? Hmm. I would have thought that it would have been close enough. But maybe that was a mistake. I would have thought that would have been close enough. He could have gone for it. Maybe that was a misclick. Okay, Silent Departure, very good against his ultimate. Um, I'm not going to mulligan. I may regret it. This guy probably is pretty good against his deck. And if you can get the cleaver out, you can win the life race most of the time. Nice to see. A two drop. I'd love to draw the stalker here. Didn't happen, but. Fox. And he's going to have his guy flip. Fair enough. We could attack and have it go on our Okay, so let's see whether it works. It may not. He may have a burn spell, may have pump spell. Or maybe forced to use a so that's two for two, but we gain four life. I can live with that. Don't like to see that. That is just ugly. Okay. Um, probably need to put out the priest. Let's turn. Hope that he has Grizzled Outcasts. That'll work too. Another card that dies to my Slayer. He's at three cards, and I have a very solid four cards. His township isn't too strong right now because he doesn't have any white mana and he doesn't have any creatures. And that's a place where if I draw another land... Yeah... I want to do this. I'll go ahead and bounce my Slayer of the Wicked. And then I'll cast him again next turn to kill him. Make sure he gets through for four. But it's just a solid kill as opposed to Burden of Guilt or Tapping Down. Or, I mean, there's. Lots of kind of weak plays, weak courses of action. Does he have. Oh, he was trying to flashback. Cost one more to flashback. Um, 
Is there another play? No. Okay. So there we go again. Take out a second threat. Go ahead and attack with the priest. If he ambush vipers me, so be it. We do have two removal spells, a pseudo removal tap down guy. Oh, um, if I equip that and swing, I'm gaining six life and dealing six to him. He could have Harvest Pyre as a way to deal with my guy. If I successfully get through for 6, I'm up to 19, he's down to 12, even if he did his increasing savagery and got himself up to Eight. I'd be able to bonds of faith him the following turn, or have him back on the tap and response instead of or end of turn tap instead of attacking tap. So, do we get through, or are we gonna harvest fire? Okay, good. And if he does increase in savagery, that's all he does this turn. Hmm. That's kind of a... Hurtful way to die. But at least he used up both pieces of it. And here I am inclined to swing for four and put out the Cathar. I'm back up to 20 life, he's down to 8. Potentially speaking, I could Feeling of Dread and Bonds of Faith next turn to get in the kill shot. Especially if he commits his mana. Attacking this curious play. Curious course of action. Okay. Um, what I think we do. Put that on that guy. Put that on that guy. And leave up feeling of dread. in case he has some surprise untapped maneuver. And if he doesn't, we win. Well, good. That's how you win an 8-4. You get insanely lucky. No, not insanely lucky. It wasn't an overly powered pool. Um, the increase in devotion never really came in. It was the simple Invisible Stalker, Butcher's Cleaver, Slayer, for removal type of thing that was really getting me there. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.